Criminals Behind Bars. Under Arrest, the story of Police Captain Jim Scott's fight against crime. Captain Scott. Harry Gavin, Jim. Yeah? I'm at Madame Cherini's. Great. Aren't you supposed to be on duty? I am. I'm sitting up with a corpse. Has the corpse got a name? Sure has. Jerome K. Wade. Jerome K. Not the gun manufacturer. That's right. The fellow who used to be partners with Sam Carver? On the button. He's been shot. Who did it? Sam Carver. Oh, you're crazy. Sam Carver's been dead for four years. Yeah, I know. Now, look, Gavin. From what you tell me, an important man's been murdered. I don't like to joke about such things. I'm not kidding, Madam. Cherini's a medium. She swears Sam Carver did it. A medium? Yeah, one of those people who bring back the dead. Looks like she brought back Sam Carver. Cute, huh? I didn't think it was cute. The Sam Carver case had been looked upon as a suicide. Carver was partners with Wade in the gun factory, and it was his job to inspect the guns before shipment. He passed a defective bunch, and they were shipped to the Army. Some of the boys at Okinawa got a rough deal when the guns didn't function as called for, and the incident created quite a scandal. Carver wrote a full confession, then blew his brains out in the library of his home. Only one thing didn't jive. We never could locate the gun. Madame Cherini's place was located over the Red Parrot Bar and Grill. You had to pass through the bar to reach the back step. Hey, where do you think you're going? Get my fortune told. I have a date with Madame Cherini. Ah, uh, wise guy, huh? Well, if I were... Oh, excuse me. Didn't know you wore a badge. That's okay. Which way is it? Turn right through the door there, and it's one flight up at the head of the stairs. Thanks. Oh, Oh, Larry. Where is it? Right here. That third eye in the middle of his head is a bullet hole. Thanks. You find a gun to go with it? No, Jim, and I've been all over the room. No gun? That's right. Just like it was with his partner, Sam Carver. Uh, This is Madame Cherini. No. This is a terrible thing to happen, Captain. I've been practicing for 30 years, and I never had any trouble before. It's always the first time. Oh, believe me, Captain, I run a respectable place. Such a thing has never happened to me. Nothing happened to you. Not yet. Happened to Wade. Were you here when he was shot? Yes and no. Yes and no? I was in my trance. Mr. Wade wanted to communicate with the spirit of his dead partner. He held a seance. I remember nothing. I just reached through to my control. Control? The spirit who makes my contacts for me, Kathy. Communication was established. The next thing I knew, I heard a shot. It penetrated the veil. I came back to Earth once more. The room was pitch black except for a light behind me. I turned and saw it. Just as plain as I see you now. It was Sam Carver, a gun in his hand. Oh, it was a beautiful materialization. Beautiful. Yes, no doubt. What happened then? It vanished right into thin air. Of course, it couldn't stay once I was my conscious self. Of course. I turned on the light. The switch is right here under the table. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wade was exactly opposite me. He had a look on his face, a look that I'll never forget. His mouth was open as though he were about to say something. Then he toppled out of his chair, just as he is now. You were conducting a seance? Yes. You need more than two people for a seance. Who else was here? Mrs. Wade and Mrs. Carver. Where are they now? Mrs. Carver took Mrs. Wade home. You mean Mrs. Wade saw her husband shot and she left just like that? Well, she was hysterical. She kept screaming about divine judgment and our husband got what he deserved. Benny might be able to tell you more about it. He helped her out. Benny? The bartender downstairs. He Uh came running up just as soon as he heard the shot. Do you want to talk to him? Yeah. Yeah, go get him, Larry. Jack. I think it might not be such a bad idea to question this Benny. (laughs) While Gavin went to get the bartender, I took a look around the room. Nothing unusual about it. No secret trap doors, sliding panels, nothing like that. There were heavy plush hangings, but they covered bare walls only. A low-hanging chandelier hung over the round table, and the light switch, as she said, was under the table. But you couldn't see any props, nothing to create contrived effects. Madame Cherini herself didn't look the part of the conventional medium, except for the fact that she was dressed completely in black and had a pair of the deepest, blackest eyes I've ever seen. There he is, Captain. Hello, Benny. Captain. Madame Cherini tells me you rushed up to the room as soon as you heard the shot. Is that right? Yep. Why? Why? Weren't you afraid of getting shot yourself? 
Oh, I see what you mean, Captain. Well, no, frankly, I didn't think of that. Madame Cherini's a good friend of mine. I only thought she might be in trouble. And you're not afraid of guns? Not as much as most people, I guess. In a way, I'm kind of used to them. Where did you get used to them? Okinawa. Okinawa? Yeah, there was a war. You remember? Yes, I remember, Benny. I also remember a certain ugly incident. Bad guns delivered to our boys in a certain company. Could be some of your buddies died on that account. Jerome K. Wade and Sam Carver manufactured those guns. I'm not saying Wade didn't deserve to die, Benny. I ain't saying he didn't deserve it either. I think that... Hey, why look at me? I didn't do it. There was nobody in the room but the women when you entered, and nobody could have passed you on the stairs. Maybe you didn't run into the room at all, Benny. Maybe you were here all the time. Nuts, I was down at the bar waiting on my customers till I heard that shot. Why couldn't it have... Yes, exactly. Why couldn't it have been one of the women? I don't think so. As I remember seances, you all hold hands around the table. Isn't that right, Madam Cherini? That's right, Captain Scott. And Wade held each of the women by the hand, and they in turn held the hands of Madam Cherini. Doesn't seem possible, unless all three women were in league to kill Wade. In that case, the other two could have released Madam Cherini, but that seems like too long a shot. Yeah? Well, then maybe you can explain how I got to look like Sam Carver, huh? They all agree that it was the ghost of Sam Carver who killed Wade. What do you mean, all? Mrs. Carver, Mrs. Wade, and Madam Cherini here. That's right, Captain. We all recognized him. There couldn't have been any doubt that it was Sam Carver. Sam Carver's been dead for four years. Yet you're sure you recognized him. You must have known him well. Very well. Sam Carver was interested in spiritualism. Mr. Wade always used to laugh at him. Yet you claim it was Wade who asked for this seance. And it was here he was murdered. Now, who killed him? Sam Carver. Bunk. Dead men don't go around killing people. In my profession, Captain, you find out that dead people are not quite as dead as they seem. I got a funny feeling as I looked at the corpse. There was something in the expression kind of fixed smile, and the bullet hole Larry Gavin had described as a third eye. For a moment in the dim light, I could have sworn the dead man winked. But it's my job to catch live murderers, not ghosts. Jerome K. Wade was killed by a slug from a thirty-two. Nothing ghostly about that. But as far as the gun was concerned, it might just as well have been ectoplasm. I warned Madame Cherini and Benny, the bartender, not to leave town. Lieutenant Gavin went to look up Mrs. Wade and get her story. Myself, I went to pay a call on Mrs. Sam Carver. Captain Scott, I, I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting. Quite all right, Mrs. Carver. Naturally, you're upset. Naturally. There's Sam and poor Jerry. <sighs> Would you care for a drink? I think I need one. Thank you. I don't. She looked anything but upset. Mrs. Carver must have been quite a beauty in her day, and her day was not quite past. She moved like an animal with a lithe, sensuous grace. She smiled invitingly and sank down on the couch beside me, sipping her drink. Pity we have to meet always under these circumstances. Isn't it? I won't pretend I'm exactly grief-stricken about Jerry Wade. He was just as responsible as my husband. Even more so for that arms shipment. Yet poor Sam took all the blame. What happened tonight? Exactly. Probably just what you already heard. Mr. Wade invited me to attend the seance. I thought Mr. Wade didn't believe in such things. No, but he knew I did. Oh. Sam and I were always great believers in spiritualism, and especially in Madame Cherini. Well, what was Wade's idea? To convince me he had nothing to do with Sam's passing. I've always suspected something peculiar about my husband's death. I could never quite believe that Sam committed suicide. Although it was I who found the body and the gun was right next to his hand. A gun? What happened to it? <laughs> it simply disappeared. Like the murderer disappeared tonight? Murderer? I'm sorry. The truth is, Captain, I don't like my husband being called a murderer. Your husband? <laughs> oh, you mean the ghost. I saw it with my own eyes. So did the Wades and Madame Cherini. There couldn't have been any disguise. Well, it was dark in the room. There was a light around him. He was pale and his eyes were burning. He looked straight at Jerry Wade. The same gun was in his hand. The same gun? How do you know? 
Don't ask me how. I just knew. Yes? Go on. He looked straight at Wade. And I heard Wade say in a strange, broken voice, No, no, Sam, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to. Honest. And then... Yes? My husband uttered one word, murderer, and fired. Madame Cherini awoke, and my husband disappeared. With the gun? Of course. Now, look here, Mrs. Carver. That was no ghostly bullet which killed Jerry Wade. It was a real bullet like the one which killed your husband. By the way, who was present in this house the night your husband was shot? Was shot? You don't think he killed himself then? I'm not sure. In any case, he was shot. I'm asking you who was here. Well, there were Mr. and Mrs. Wade, my son. Your son? John, he'd just come home from college. There was quite an argument between him and his father. It was on account of that scandal about the gun. Mm. Who is he now? Away at school, at Yale. Yes, go on. Anybody else? Oh, yes, of course. There was Madame Cherini. She stayed to dinner. We were going to have a seance later. Who was the last person who saw your husband alive? Madame Cherini, I think. She had a talk with Sam in the library. Sam was very upset about the argument with John. Madame Cherini was his advisor. Hmm. You don't look like the mother of a grown son. Thank you, Captain. Are all policemen so gallant? I imagine they would be. With you. Thank you again. Are you sure you don't care for a drink? Quite sure. Too bad, Captain. We could both do with a bit of relaxation. <laughs> It was late when I got to my office next morning. Larry Gavin had seen Mrs. Wade in a story checked with those of Madame Cherini, Benny, and Mrs. Carver in every particular, even to the exact words used by her husband and the ghost. Lieutenant Gavin had his own theory about the crime, and I wasn't too sure he was wrong. Jim, I say it's all hypnosis. This medium sets up the mood, gets them all into a frame of mind where they're ready to believe anything. She shot Wade. It was dark in that room. How else could anybody plug him right in the middle of the fard without being close up and knowing exactly where he was sitting? Well, maybe an ordinary guy couldn't, but a ghost could. Now, don't tell me you're going soft in the head, too. Well, all the stories check. They couldn't all have been in on a plot to kill Jerry Wade. I don't say they were. I'm saying the old gal hypnotized him and adds up. Maybe. I'd like to check with ballistics first. Captain Scott, get me the lab. Yes, sir. Yes? Captain Scott, did you check the weight bullet against the bullet in the carver file? Yes, I did, Captain. Well? It's from the same gun, Captain. There's no doubt about it. Are you sure it's from the same gun? Positive. Thanks. Well, that clinches it. It must be the medium. Why? Wasn't she there the night Carver was shot? Right. Aren't all these mediums pretty good sleight-of-hand artists? Right. Wouldn't it have been a simple matter for a good magician to divert attention and pick up the gun in Carver's hand? Right. And wouldn't she use the same gun to kill Wade? Wrong. Why not? Why should she plan a murder in her own home? where everything points against her. So she could blame it on a ghost. What motive would she have in killing Wade? He thought she was a phony. He was an enemy of Sam Carver's, one of her oldest friends. Not enough. Nobody risked the chair for that. Then what do you think? The ghost did it? Maybe. Oh, have you gone nuts? <laughs> Maybe. Get me the red parrot bar and grill. What are you going to do? Make an appointment with the ghost. Oh. Hello? Benny, Captain Scott. Oh, yeah, Captain. Could you call upstairs and bring Madame Cherini to the phone? Don't have to call her, Captain. She's right here. Oh, well, you know, uh, she's right there. Madame Cherini, this phone is for you. Thank you, dear. Yes, Captain Scott? Madame Cherini, you claim you brought back the spirit of Sam Carver last night. Materialized, I think, is the word oh. you used. Yes, Captain. Then, uh, could you materialize this spirit again for me? I don't think so. Why should you want me to do that? I'd like to remind you, Madame Cherini, this ghost is wanted for murder. Oh, nonsense, Captain. You can't electrocute a ghost. We can try. I won't do it. Madame Cherini, I'm afraid you don't realize your position. If you're a faker, then the ghost killer is something cooked up by you, and you're under suspicion of murder. If you're on the level, it's up to you to prove it by producing the ghost. Spirit materializations are not easy. I may not be successful. Well, uh, that would be too bad for you. The atmosphere has to be propitious. What's wrong with the atmosphere? There's too many policemen. They're all over the place. Spirits are allergic to policemen. Well, I'll send them away. I can't rely upon you for that. You've got my word. 
All right, then. When? Tonight. Tomorrow morning, rather. Say about 3 a.m. Why so late? I want the circumstances to be favorable. I don't want any noise from downstairs. At 3 a.m., the bar will be closed. Okay, you've got a deal. One more thing. What is it? We'll need at least two others, sympathetic spirits. I think I can get Mrs. Carver. Fine. How about Mrs. Wade? Oh, I'm afraid she's too upset. I have it. We'll use Benny. The bartender? Is he sympathetic with spirits? You ought to be. Dishes enough of mouth. Shut up. What is that? Uh, I'm sorry, Madame Cherini. I wasn't talking to you. Okay, it's a date. 3 a.m. Another thing. You must purify your mind. Oh? Well, how do I do that? Go into seclusion. Seclusion? Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Larry, who have you got trailing Madame Cherini? Hennessy. Where is he now? Across the street in a cigar store at Maple and Clark. Phone him. Tell him not to lose sight of Madame Cherini for a minute. It's urgent. Okay. Uh, where are you going? Into seclusion. You heard what Madame Cherini said. Where can I reach you? My room. Phone me if it's important. <laughs> Hello? Jim, Larry Gavin, and this is important. Yes? Hennessy's been telling Madame Cherini she's gone to Mrs. Carver's house. Only natural. She's inviting him to the seance. She's been in there with her for over an hour. If all she wanted was to invite her, she could have used the phone. I see. Okay, I'll take care of it. You going to the Carver house? No, I'll wait for Madame Cherini at the bar under her room. Is uh, that the way to purify your mind? <laughs> it's my way. Uh, did you call the boys off? Yes, Captain. But you, think... you think it's smart? I'll let you know after the night. All right, if anything comes up, I'll be at the bar. <laughs> Boy, I wish I were a captain. Oh, good evening, Captain. What's your pleasure? Anything with the original label? <laughs> Madam Cherini told you about the seance? Yeah. Ever been to one of those things before? Yeah, lots of times, lots of times. I'll uh, have to hold your hand tonight, Captain. Mind? Oh, not so long as somebody holds your other hand. <laughs> Here it is, Captain. Oh, here's one, you're right. Not much, Captain. Ectoplasm. Captain Scott, I didn't expect to find you here. Just checking up, Madam Cherini, making sure everything's all right for the seance. But, uh, shouldn't you be resting yourself? Well, even mediums can use a little fresh air. Is that all you went out for? Fresh air? And ask Mrs. Carver to attend. Will she? Yes. Fine. This is hardly the atmosphere for you before a seance. You should be alone with your thoughts. I was just going, but uh, just one question. Mrs. Carver told me you spoke to her husband shortly before his death. Yes? Did he sound to you like a man who was going to commit suicide? No. Yet he left a suicide note. Not a suicide note, Captain Scott. A confession. There's a difference. Suppose it weren't suicide. Have you any theory about what might have happened? Well... Well, this is only a supposition, mind you, but in the light of recent events... Like the ghost of Sam Carver returning to shoot Jerry Wade? Exactly. There was a big argument at the Carver house the night he was killed. His son, John, wanted both Wade and Carver to confess and take the consequences. Shortly afterward, both men retired to the library. And what happened? Well, I wasn't there. I can only suppose. Yes? Wade could have pretended to be convinced that it was best for them both to write full confessions. Then what? Once the confessions were written, Wade could have shot him and placed the gun near his hand. Then all Wade would have to do was sneak out through a side exit, taking his own confession with him and leaving Carver's. It would look to everyone as though Sam Carver had taken his own life in remorse. And what could have happened to the gun? Well, Wade would have been afraid of his prints on the gun. He could have pocketed it later while no one was looking. Or someone else could have picked it up. Yourself, for instance. What do you mean? Skip it. Did you tell Wade about your theory? I did make certain suggestions. Enough to convince the unbelieving Wade to attend a seance? Now, this is only a theory, mind you, Madame Cherini, but I'm going to be as generous with you as you are with me. Suppose you were the one who lifted the gun. Suppose you weren't an authentic medium, and suppose you wanted to frighten Wade into a confession of guilt. A confession only you would be able to force. Why should I want to do that? It's an ugly word, Madame Cherini. Blackmail. Well, there's an uglier word, Captain Scott. Murder. <laughs> if such was my intention, why should I kill the goose that lays the golden eggs? Well, it's only a theory, Madame Cherini. I was only 
supposing you were a fake. You are an authentic medium, aren't you? Of course, Captain. But you'll find that out tonight, won't you? I hope to find out a lot of things tonight. It was uncanny. I now understood the purpose of the curtains on the walls and the dark dress worn by the medium was to absorb even the faintest suggestion of light. Try as I would, my eyes could not penetrate the darkness. I sat directly opposite Madame Cherini. Mrs. Carver held my left hand, and I could feel her knee brush mine under the table. Benny held my right hand. The medium held theirs. The circle made a chain of communication that was almost electrical. Through the hands of those next to me, I could feel the medium stiffen as she went into a trance. She began to moan and then called upon her control, the spirit who was a guide in the other world. Kathy, are you there? Kathy, Kathy, answer me. Two raps if you can come through. Three if there is interference. Uh, do you hear me? Good. Are the channels clear tonight? Two raps, yes. Three, no. I will speak no more. Mrs. Carver will ask you questions. And you will answer her through me. Is that clear? Can you hear me? Is the spirit of my husband with you? shoulders were framed in the light as though suspended in midair. The face was supernaturally pale. The eyes dark and glowing. Sam! Sam! Captain Scott is here. He's a policeman. Show him. Show him what you did last night. From nowhere, a hand appeared. A hand with a gun. The figure uttered one word. Murder. I heard a click. I crashed to the floor, sweeping Mrs. Carver down with me. There was a flash, and the shot reverberated through the room like a thunderbolt. Under cover of the darkness, I lunged saw the figure with the gun. He seemed to be running toward the fire escape window. There was a crash as the window broke. I pulled my gun and started after him. Too late, I realized I'd been tricked. The so-called specter had thrown something through the window, probably the gun, and then made for the hall door leading to the stairs. I heard him go running down the stairs. Madam Cerini! Madam Cerini! Put on the light! What is it? What's happened? Put on the light. The switch. Under the table. Mrs. Carver found the switch. For a moment, I could not get used to the glare. When I was able to focus my eyes, I saw Madame Cerini on the floor. 
dead. The hole was in the back of the head this time. Ghost or no ghost, our murderer was a dead shot. And then I noticed Benny was gone. Down the stairs. I was about to follow when I heard a noise in the hall. Somebody was coming up. Okay, Chief. Here's your ghost. John. Oh, John. No doubt about it. The ghost was John Carver, Mrs. Carver's son. It explained the resemblance to Sam. The resemblance that fooled Mrs. Wade and trapped her husband into blurting out a confession. John Carver was dressed all in black. The inside of his black top coat was smeared with phosphorescent paint from the waist up. In the darkness of the room, all he had to do was to open his coat slightly to get the ghostly glow he had all seen. He nabbed him as he came charging outside. He must get away in the dark. Good thing his coat was open. Good thing you disobeyed my orders and was here to catch him. Well, what have you got to say for yourself, John? It wasn't his fault. You didn't know what he was doing. No, it's all right, Mother. Here. I killed Wade. He deserved to die. And the medium? Madame Cherini started the whole thing. She knew I never believed my father committed suicide. She came to me with a plan for trapping Wade into a confession. Got me to play the ghost. Was Madame Cherini who gave you the gun? Yes, she had smeared it with some of that shiny paint to scare Wade. That was my idea, too, at first. But when I heard Wade admitting his guilt, practically confessing he murdered my father, something snapped inside of me. I pulled the trigger. I'm a good shot. We know that much. I hid behind the curtain. When Benny took Mother and Mrs. Wade down, I stole after them. The bar was crowded. All eyes were on Mrs. Wade, who was hysterical. They left to the front door. I slipped in, mixed with the crowd, and made my getaway. Why did you kill Madame Cherini? She came to the house. She was furious because I'd shot Wade. Said something about killing the goose who laid the golden eggs. It was evidently her intention to blackmail him. Wade was dead, so she chose to blackmail me instead through Mother. John. John, why did you? My mother had nothing to do with all this. I couldn't stand by and see that woman torture her. I know. And I'm not saying I don't understand, son. But no man is big enough to take the law into his own hands. Ready to go, Larry? I'll set you. Take your prisoner. Under arrest. <laughs> All prisoners present and accounted for. You have just heard Under Arrest, presented by Mutual, a new series featuring Joe DeSantis as police captain Jim Scott. Under Arrest is directed by Martin Markner. Today's drama was written by Norman Lessing. Original music is composed and played by Milton Kay. Madame Torini was played by Virginia Payne, Mrs. Carver by Linda Watkins, John Carver by Leon Janney, Lieutenant Gavin by Carl Eastman, and Benny by Annie Donnelly. All names of persons used in Under Arrest are fictitious. Any resemblance to names of actual persons, living or dead, is coincidental. Broadcast engineer, Cy Paget. Sound effects, Ronnie Harper and Walt Shaver. Your announcer is Jack Curtis. This program came from New York.